All right, everyone. Thank you for joining me for Ash Conversations, episode number five. Ash Conversations is an interview talk show where we bring players from the Melee community to learn about their backstories, their future, and what's going on in their lives. On tonight's episode, joining us, we have Melee It On Me, Smash EG, Big Blue Esports, Mac.Zeb. He's most known as a New England TO, started playing in 2005, mains Falco. Some fun facts is he's the founder of TMG, ranked number 10 in New England, and recently just got a job working full-time at Smash GG. Um, thank you for joining me today, Matt. How are you doing? I am very good. I'm hoping right now you can hear me. I'm not sure. I have an internet connection problem error on Skype, so I hope you can hear me just fine. I can hear you. The It's a little, you know, it's a little pixelated, but we'll, we'll call it a 2006 edition interview. <laughs> Uh, hopefully that'll resolve itself in just a moment. I don't know. Um, but yeah, no, thank you for uh, inviting me on to the show tonight, Ashcon. I appreciate it. Yeah, it's, it's uh, great. You know, thanks for uh, joining us. Um, you know, uh, so... I love the name of the show, by the way. <laughs> Ash Conversations. It gave me yeah. a little chuckle. Yeah, it's not good. You know, uh, how are you feeling, though, in your, your last few days in New England? Um... They feel very normal, which is very strange. You know, they feel like any other day, kind of. Um, you know, I just went to my last New Game Plus on Tuesday. Um, I almost went to a tournament last night, but I decided not to in order to, um, you know, do a little bit of work and, and continue packing and moving things around. But, uh, you know, aside from from that, it's uh, it feels just very strikingly normal, which is just so strange, you know. Um, like, we're, we're selling our house also pretty soon, so we've been doing a lot of furniture moving and everything, so that also, just on top of the whole moving cross-country thing, there's the whole, you know, well, we have to empty out our house, <laughs> and I have to do as much as I can before I leave, of course. Um, otherwise, you know, I'm just leaving it to my mom, more or less. Um, so, I, I, I don't know, it's just been really just odd. You know, we're just we're just going through all these, these things in my house, but, like, with the community in particular, it just feels very you know, just very routine, I guess. You know, I went to a new game plus, I left, and then it's just like, oh, well, that's also my last one, but it didn't really feel um, like anything more special or particular to me, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so it's just very, just, I don't know, just a strange feeling. I just know I'm going to be flying out to Vegas next Tuesday, and the Monday after that, um driving from Vegas to San Francisco with the Smash GG crew, and we will be in the office the day after that and living in my own apartment, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so it's just, I don't know. I don't know really how to put it into words. It just, just feels very odd, very, I guess, surreal in a way, you know? Mm -hmm. Where it's like, okay, wait, we're actually leaving New England, like, <laughs> and I'm leaving in, like, four days. And when I think about it like that, or five days or whatever it is, and when I think about it like that, it's like, okay, whoa, 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 whoa that soon <laughs> like i still have so much to do i still have so many people to see like i what am i doing you know but uh i don't know just oh, it's just strange but i'm very excited for the whole uh you know upcoming i guess adventure that i'll be going into with my life are you uh from new england originally mm -hmm. Yeah, I've, I've lived in Quincy, Massachusetts, which is right below Boston. I basically tell people Boston, but Quincy is a town, well, a city technically, that um, borders Boston to the south. Uh, it, it's very large, um, and I've lived here my entire life with few exceptions. Um, you know, my mother's grandfather, I think, built the house. And, uh, you know, so it's also a little bit sad having to live leave the house and everything. I've been here my whole life and everything, too. Yeah, and um, that's kind of crazy, though. Like, It's uh, exciting, though, I imagine. Mm. Well, it's coming at a good time, you know, with the with the job and everything. Yeah. You know, we've been planning on selling the house, and my option was basically to continue working at a job I didn't want to work at and living in my friend's one-bedroom condo <laughs> <laughs> and splitting that with him and his yeah. girlfriend. It's like, ah... Yeah, <laughs> so I'm pretty happy that things have, you know, kind of gone the way that they have, at least. You know, it's it's all been very lucky um, that it's all happened around the same time, you know. Yeah, and um, you've always kind of just been really passionate about Smash. I know you've always kind of talked about, like, man, I wish there was a job I had that I could do, like, and be as invested in as I am in, like, things like the Melee games and whatnot. Right. And it's really cool to see that you've, you know, finally gotten something like that. 
Yeah, I have a job that I can work on the Melee games and work on, you know, other Smash-related projects and not be scolded by management. That. <laughs> so that's cool. <laughs> Wait, what did you do for work uh, previously, I guess? Well, I uh, it was actually really my... Basically, it was my second job. Um, and I got it when I was 18. Um just bordering on 19, a couple months before I turned 19, in um, August of 2010. Well, I've been at this company for quite a while, and uh, it's an answering service. It's a small business, about under under 30 employees, and a r miraculous turnover rate, which is crazy how many people don't want to work at an answering service, but I don't blame them. But uh, So I've been there for six years. Um, Basically, we take messages from callers who, you know, may be calling a property management company, a doctor's office, visiting nurse association, hospital, HVAC company, you know, something like that. Um, whenever their staff would be unavailable, either during business hours or after hours when they're closed, we would take their calls. We would take messages and relay them over in the morning or if it were more urgent, you know, like a maintenance issue or a health issue or I want to speak to a nurse or I want to speak to an on-call doctor or I need to speak with a technician about my no-hot water issue or something like that, uh, will dispatch it to on-call staff. And so the job itself is very easy. Um, it helped me a lot in articulation and speaking. You know, a lot of people will, if you hear me on the phone now, I have a very good phone voice to the point where even if I'm just completely like drunk, which happened at Pound and somebody called our hotel room and I answered it like, hello, thank you for calling room 815. How can I help you? You know, just like out of the blue, you know, completely blasted drunk and just like answered the phone perfectly. You know, and the call went great. <laughs> but so, I mean, I've learned a lot through that job, but that's what I've been doing for a long time. And, you know, I I felt before I started the job, you know, it's I mean, six years is a long time, but for a long time, I've also felt this way that before I started the job, I was a lot um, happier, more energetic as a person. And I felt that the job, you know, was kind of like soul sucking, <laughs> mm -hmm. you know. And uh, so, yeah, I'm, I'm very, very happy to be done with that. And, you know, I, I learned some supervisory skills, too. I was a manager um, for a time and then just went back down to being like a regular supervisor of other operators. So I would deal with clients and take down some administrative information as well, uh, keeping files in order and things like that. And I was, I was good at it, but, you know, it's not difficult work at all, by any means. And, uh, yeah, that's, that's what I that's what I've been doing. So I'm very happy to be done with that. You should have <laughs> when I gave them like when I gave them four weeks notice back at the start of June. Uh, I said the biggest smile on my face. I couldn't do anything about it. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's really good to hear. And, um, you know, taking it back a bit, like a lot back, what was life like for you growing up? You know, you talked about how you grew up in New England, but what was the young Matt Dodd Zeb like? Um, how young? <laughs> um, how, far, how far back do you want me to go? As far go, back, of, honestly, like as far back as you want to go. We can talk um, as much as you want. I mean, I got like 24 years of story, right? Um, it's your time. It's your time to give all those 24 years. <laughs> uh, well, I guess like as a young kid, uh, my parents divorced when I was four, mm -hmm. and uh, there's there. You know, I don't want to like put too much of the issue on the table, but you know, there's some like abuse and things like that um, that you know led to the separation, and um, pretty shortly after that. I think when I was five, because um, apparently I was very like hyper, very uncontrollable when I was younger. I didn't, you know, I don't really, but it, like recall that assessment of myself. But, you know, when you're a kid, you don't make that assessment of yourself. Mm -hmm. And um, so my mother ended up bringing me to like these uh, psychologists who like specialize in like ADHD, ADD and probably other stuff. And after like nine months, when I was at this point now six, uh, I was diagnosed with ADHD and put on... Um, or Ritalin or something, Adderall, you know, one of those. Yeah. Um, from there, I don't, I don't know. Um, you know, grade school was grade school. It wasn't anything in particular. I didn't, like, have a crazy amount of friends, but I had a couple that I was pretty tight with. Um, you know, we just played video games and just, you know, uh, just kind of have fun with what we could. You know, we were kids playing Yu-Gi-Oh, Pokemon, um, you know, things like that. And over time, you know, I just got more and more into video gaming. Um, I felt very excluded. I don't know why, but it maybe just like built that in my mind when I was like very young. 
I felt very excluded from my peers. So I tried to be like, kind of like, hello, you know, hi, I'm Matt, but like not really get anywhere beyond that point because I just felt that for whatever reason, everybody was just like, you know, oh, this kid's a fucking weirdo, you know, don't pay any attention to him. And like, it wasn't that all the case. That's just like what I built up in my mind. I don't know really why that was. Um, but I don't know. I think at the same time, like my mother was very depressed. So I didn't have much of a figure in that way. So a lot of the time it was like growing up for me was, you know, just me and my sister um, kind of just doing our own thing, I guess. Um, and, you know, a lot of it was I just put time into video games. And, uh, you know, so eventually uh, one of my friends who I got very close with where we would just play, you know, just play games to the point of just like flipping games upside down and playing whatever comes to us, um, found speedrunning. And from there, we're like, well, they probably do this for Smash because Smash was one of the games that we played the most. Um, and we found like target test runs and stuff like that, which eventually led to us discovering competitions in 2005 when I was still 13 at that time. Um, and then I got into the community from there and it's kind of, you know, decided that was like my thing. It helped me grow um, socially, you know. Mm -hmm. I started to get more confident in myself and. Um, I guess kind of come out of my shell and realize that, like, you know, I definitely was like a awkward, weird little kid, you know, <laughs> where I was just like, okay, hold on, let me kind of, you know, work on myself while I meet people who, you know, just want to be my friend um, and play video games with me. And, um, you know, so that was really nice. You know, there's some older figures in the community at the time, like older being like 17 or 18. Anyone um, in particular? Well, Korean DJ was a big one. Um, he was him and another person who now goes by the tag Vigilante. I won't, his, his older tag was a little bit uh, not inappropriate. <laughs> Definitely not esports, but it <laughs> stood for Super Powered Ice Climbers. I it totally didn't, but like it totally did. Um, <laughs> um, but, you know, even like, so that was like the sort of the smash part. And, you know, I, I've definitely talked about that a lot, but like with, uh, with like school and things like that. Like once I hit high school, which was, you know, I was, I think I got into Smash like between my junior, or my, between my freshman and sophomore year, I think it was. Um, I was still like trying to discover like, okay, what do I have? Like, you know, what do I want to do outside of this and everything like that? And I couldn't really put too much of it. Like I, I didn't really put much together, you know? Um, and I just kind of had like a little ragtag group of friends, you know? And uh still very much like had to deal with my mother's depression. You know, she would be like in her room for weeks at a time, um, pretty much just leaving to like eat and shower. And so like a lot of like those years, maybe up until I was like 17 or 18, um, before she really started to pull out of it. Um, and she's doing great now, but you know, a lot of those like early teen years and like mid teen years, uh, I had to deal with a lot of that because she was unemployed, um, due to, you know, the depression impacting her job, but also some, some things at her job. And she was very uh, accomplished in her field in construction. She was a, um, what was it? Whatever. She was, she was like some pretty high up field in one of the um, neighboring towns. Um, like I think a building commissioner or something. She had like the final word on many buildings that were built. Um, but yeah, so like through high school, I didn't really have much of like guidance, you know? So I, my grades definitely suffered. I was just like, like a lot of other people, you know, you're that smart kid who was like, and I don't really care, you know. Um, I got very lucky. Like, they ended up putting me in night school in the 12th grade because I just didn't get to school on time. And I'm, I'm still late for a lot of stuff. But, um, you know, the the school was like, what are you doing? You're like, you're a smart kid. We don't want to see you fail. <laughs> you know, so they're like, we'll put you in night school, which I was probably still late for a fair amount of time. But, uh, you know, I graduated on time and everything like that. But the school just basically being like, here, take the easiest thing that we can offer you and we'll pass you. <laughs> so I was like, okay. Um and after that, I really didn't do any college or anything. I just kind of, I don't know, still tried to figure things out. Um, yeah. But yeah, that's like, I guess that's the most, that's the biggest chunk of it, I suppose you would say. Yeah, you, you talked a lot about how you kind of found guidance from the Smash community. Mm. Was there anyone within like the New England scene that had significant like impacts? Like, like how did they have like an impact in helping you find your guidance? Um, I mean, well, Korean DJ was just like the first like older figure um, that I really had, like, in the community, I would say, um, you know, where, I, I don't really know how you would say that, like, he particularly guided me, but I don't know, I just kind of learned a lot from him, you know, just by being around him, um, 
Oh, no, there was uh, Vigilante, uh, Tom. Um, I was, you know, he would always give me rides to tournaments and things like that. And at the time, he had a very um, interesting way of talking about women. And, I, you know, I, I, as a young kid, you were like, oh, that's so cool. But now I'm looking back at it, and I'm like, yeah, <laughs> no. Um, but uh, so that, I'd say there was definitely those two. But also uh, Zoso, David Hughes. Um was a really big one and he's you know just been a very good friend um throughout the entire time i've been in the community i think i met him in 2006 and uh I don't know, it was at like korean dj's house and i actually won't forget it because i remember he was, like covered in poison ivy that day um <laughs> um but uh i guess i guess like those were the biggest three i i guess you'd say um that were like just a little bit older than me and i i, I don't really know i guess how i would say that they guided me but they just Oh, they they did. You know, it's it's hard to exactly put into words, like in what way specifically. Um, I mean, Zoso definitely helped me get better at like dealing with some of like if I was like just doing something badly, <laughs> like if I was running a tournament badly, you know, he would just come up to me and be like, "This is shit. Like, do do better. Like you're just doing an awful job. Do better." You know, and he would call me out and stuff like that. You know, um, and that really helped me get a lot better at. Uh, organizing events for sure because <laughs> i didn't want david to yell at me <laughs> um there, there's kind of a saying that like the five people you spend the most time around is like the person you kind of become mm -hmm. so it yeah, sounds like you become the, the average of your peers yeah basically yeah yeah I've definitely heard that before i would say it's true for most folks yeah it definitely would... the the peer pressure and whatnot positive and yeah, yeah. negative but um you know, we talked a lot about Smash, but was, like, Melee the first competitive thing you did? No. No. Um, when I was younger, like, I would play soccer, mm -hmm. baseball, basketball. Um, but after middle school, I also did track and field in middle school. But uh, once I got to high school, I just completely stopped doing anything like that just entirely. Um but yeah, I definitely was involved in things like that for a little bit of my life. Mm -hmm. Do you think it uh, the competitive spirit's kind of just always been with you to want to to win, or is, is it something no. that kind of developed with Smash? I think it's more something that developed with Smash, because um, mm -hmm. a lot of it, you know, when you're when for me, like being younger, doing those things, like playing those sports, it was just kind of like presented to me like my mom was like hey we're gonna sign you up for soccer and i'm like okay <laughs> you know um and i did it not and i liked it you know i mean i wouldn't have done it if i didn't at least enjoy it but uh it's you like know. the typical life of a american child it's like you do some sport it, yeah yeah i i would i would say so um but yeah I, I guess with smash i that that is really what put me into you know something I could like kind of be tangible about in terms of competition. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, I, I guess you could say that it was like the first thing that I was really like looking at in a competitive way. Mm -hmm. And uh, you talked about how you kind of found those tech, the, what's going on the speed run videos, right? And when you found mm -hmm. it to competitive play, do you remember like what the first instance of competitive play that you watched was? For Melee? Yeah. Um, yeah, my first, it was a combo video. It was on an old play and trade forum in August 2005. And it was, um, oh, hold on. Give me one second, I just gotta pull up the name. Um, Pure Nastiness, the DVR combo video starring Mike Nasty. He was a Samus main. I'll link it in the chat if you want to take a look at it later or something. But, uh, yeah, that was um, the first thing I ever watched for a competitive Smash um, was a combo video with him. It seems I used like to main, I used to main Samus. Oh, really? Was yeah. it? I mean, it really seems like a reoccurring theme is like with players who started around like 05 to 07. It's just like I watched like this DVR video and I was like, this is sick oh, yeah. and I want to play. Well, it's that's all you had. That's yeah. all you had. I mean, yeah. I mean, you had a couple. You had a couple other things. Um, but, you know, like, this is still around the DC++ area, uh, or, like, whatever, Google videos or whatever that was. Um, 
you know, before that was part of YouTube and everything. Um, so, you know, getting that information was just, you know, you didn't have have a whole you didn't have a whole lot of content that you could get you know it wasn't as available uh you know you didn't have wub wubs and screen shakes or anything yeah. like that you know every the uh, internet was slow uh, it was uh real yeah, slow it was just a lot of dbr you know they were the ones who really put out like the comic videos and people were like oh dbr oh wow they're a crew oh my god look at the guy wave shining oh wow look at the samus oh wow <laughs> this is so cool you know um and it's still cool but it's not as cool now <laughs> <laughs> but yeah yeah no that was uh, that's how i got into it somebody somebody on the plane trip forum um i think it was roy master um he you know knew i played samus and so he was like oh you should watch this and i watched it and i was like oh this is so cool <laughs> <laughs> you know yeah that was definitely my first introduction to uh competitive melee yeah and uh what was your inspiration for playing samus just well i mean samus was my main before like competitive melee mm -hmm. and so you know i'd used her in 64 and i used her in melee from 2001 to 2005 um as my like primary good character and um you know so that's just what i what i mean when i say like he, samus used to be my main it, was, it wasn't like a con it, i just liked samus i just liked the way samus felt you know just as a casual player i just enjoyed playing samus yeah and um yeah. so you found these combo videos and uh when was it that you went to your first event like how long after was it just you playing with two your friends two weeks two weeks after and... i ever learned about advanced sec Pink's of Shark Combo video was my first event. And uh, what event did you go to? It was just a, a, a weekly play and trade tournament um, down about 30 minutes south of me at the Walpole Mall. And it, um, it was in this play and trade. They just played on, like, wall-mounted laggy monitors. <laughs> um, and they were also doing, like, Mario Kart Double Dash that night. And uh, also a game I used to be very good at by playing very frequently. But, um, yeah, and, I mean, it was, it was just a little thing like that. Very, I mean competitive but casual you know yeah um and that's where i met um vigilante that's where i met ultimate roy roy master i don't think her dj was at that one but back in the day in new england 2005 2006 um that particular venue um you know had people from like i think west one time attended something at that tournament from new york you know um so it was like a bigger kind of venue in new england i guess you'd say although you know big bigger named venue although it was yeah. actually a relatively small store um was there yeah, that was an abundance of different. events or it was just kind of no no way no <laughs> not at the time no um it, they were pretty sparse like you might have a tournament a month like maybe Like across the entirety of New England, which is, you know, six states. Yeah. Well, how often would they be? Like the... maybe once a month. Maybe once a month. Maybe once a month. Mm -hmm. And uh, how do you do it your first tournament? Just badly, having very learned... badly. <laughs> Just having oh, learned terrible. Advanced weeks. <laughs> terrible, dude. Um, my first ever moment playing somebody who was like good at melee was at that play and trade, and uh, it was against Ultimate Roy, who was a Marth player, and I played Samus. Um, and like, I just remember grappling him like through the go you know in the in the middle of the stage and i was like what did i just do <laughs> like i knew what i did i was just like whoa <laughs> like i grabbed him and i was like what do i do i, I don't know what to do <laughs> um you know um no i i got you know i used to I, I used to put it that i got my ass handed to me on a silver platter um <laughs> so i got bopped for sure did you think you um, had a chance yeah what do you mean like oh totally yeah no absolutely i thought i was like one of the best players in the world <laughs> Like, absolutely, like, no question. I thought I was one of the best players in the world going um, going to my first event and everything. And then we just, like, me and Andrew, we just got destroyed. And we're like, oh, well, maybe we're not so good. <laughs> and I'm guessing it's, like, the classic story from there. You kind of just got hooked, right? Yeah. I mean, we were already hooked for Melee. Yeah. Like, we've been playing it since 2001. Um, we were definitely already hooked for it. Yeah. You know, it was just at this point we we're like, okay, let's continue to go to tournaments, go to more tournaments. Um, and... But yeah, like I mean, that that was definitely the start into it. And from that point, like I got more into it than Andrew did. Um, he went on to get like the world record for Super Mario Brothers one and a couple other games as well. Mm -hmm. um, in terms of like full completion and short completion. Um, speed runs. But yeah, yeah, speed runs. Yeah. Um, I think he's like second place in the world for Super Mario Brothers one now because somebody beat him out by like 0.2 seconds or something. Yeah, I think that, but, uh, that like recently happened, huh? Yeah, very recently. It was, it was sometime this year. Um, but yeah, I mean, just from there, I kind of just got more into melee and and 
you know, just kept doing it. And uh, how long did you kind of go through that melee struggle where you were still a noob and just getting kind of bopped? Like, when was it that you finally started to see some success in your play? Um, You're like, maybe I'm actually good now. 2008, maybe. 2008, so about three years. Mm -hmm. And uh, what was it that, like, you finally felt like, okay, I'm getting, I'm getting good. Um, I don't. I guess I I would get like second in pools. (laughs) You know, I wouldn't get completely destroyed. Um. You know, where I could go to the pools and be like, okay, if I play well enough, like, I'll make it out to bracket. Instead of being like, all right, if I go into pools, I'm just going to, you know, see how I do. And, you know, I always had the intention to win. Um, mm-hmm. but, I, but, like, for a long time, it felt to me that my brain had an idea of what to do. But my hands wouldn't listen and they just wouldn't catch up. Um, and I guess, you know, maybe around 2008 is when that feeling stopped going away so much. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'd say that's about when I started to feel like I was starting to get good, but I was still not good. I'm still, I'm still not good. But uh, <laughs> you know, I mean, at the time, I, you know, that was that was at least when I started to feel like, all right, I'm, you know, I'm improving. Yeah, and in that period, were you traveling out of state at all, or is I mean, I guess out of, I guess well, yeah. out of region, because yeah, out of region, outside uh, of New England, yeah, yeah. outside of New England. I definitely did some out-of-state things, like going to Maine and, and Connecticut yeah. and Rhode Island. Um, I get kind of uh, torn torn from that because, uh, you know, California is just massive. I always forget. It's like, oh, yeah, the East Coast is kind of... I think my first out-of-region tournament was in 2006. I went to an MLG in New York with my mother and my sister. <laughs> How yeah. was that experience, going with your family? At it the was time? awesome. It was awesome. Um, you know, my mom wanted to be supportive about it. And my sister's like, all right, fine, I'll go with you. Um you know, and it was actually really an enjoyable experience. I got wrecked. I thought I might be able to do pretty decently, and I think I'm. I don't know if I want to set. Um, I'm not. I don't. I don't recall if I did. But uh, it was fun. I asked Kareem. I, like <laughs> Kareem DJ was like telling me he could introduce me to all these like, you know, like names. He like wife or Bach or Ken or Mewtwo King or you know, chilling and all that. And I was just like, no, I don't want to like be coming up to him and being like, oh, wow, I've seen your stuff. You're so cool. <laughs> so I never met those guys way back then. Um, I do remember, I think, um, playing or getting in line to play casuals with Mewtwo King at that event. And Chillin came up and was basically telling me to get up and so he could play him because Chillin's good and I'm not. And I was like, no, you dude no way i've been waiting in line get out of here you know like i had no idea like who he was really at the time (laughs) um but i think he ended up winning out on that exchange i didn't play ken at that tournament that was fun i played him in a a casual game i think like two casual games isaiah was there but i don't think i played him um i played hugo like hugs i used to talk with him on aim all the time but yeah that was like my first like out of region tournament um was at mlg new york in 2006 and uh yeah, I know. I I don't really remember what the ones following that were. To be perfectly honest with you, I don't really think I went too far for melee out outside of that. Like until I was closer to maybe sixteen or seventeen. Um, but even then, I couldn't really tell you what the tournament, um, like out of region tournaments I went to after that point were really. And uh, how long did it take you before you kind of started becoming a small figure in the scene? Um. I guess in the New England community, um, I guess I started to, at least, I, I, you know, nobody's going to come up to you and be like, hey, you're a figurehead now. Um, so, like, I guess, like, for me, when it started to feel like, okay, I'm doing a lot more work than some other people, um, was, like, maybe around, i say probably around 2008, 2009. Um, and this was when I was running Mass Madness, and this was when I was running Hall of Gaming as well. When I, I started a tournament series two hours away from where I lived in a different state, <laughs> um, you know. And and so like over time, you know, especially running the both of those, I started to get a feeling of like, all right, I'm kind of like putting New England on my back. But I felt, you know, if I expressed that, you know, and if I went to people and be like, hey, yeah, you know, I'm, I'm, you know. I'm doing more work than you, (laughs) you know, like I'm supporting the region more than you are. Like, what are you doing? You know, if I went to people like that or something, like I felt 
that it would come off just like kind of like arrogantly or in a bad way or something. Um, so I really didn't like try to make much of a deal of it. And, uh, you know, I, I still try not to because I still feel somewhat similarly to that. Um, you know, so like, I think just over time, like other people were like, people just kind of started noting it. Um, but I guess, I guess like starting maybe in 2011 or 2012 was when people in the region really started to be like, all right, Matt's doing a lot of stuff. <laughs> and like, that's when I guess when I started to be looked at more of like a figurehead, I suppose. Yeah. yeah you've kind of had like this, like, I feel like every time someone like brings you up, it's like, oh yeah, Matt Dodd said the, that T.O. from uh, New England. Mm -hmm. Also the, uh, the cool and creative combos. <laughs> yeah, dude. The cool and creative combo. Um, yeah. But looking back at your career as a smasher, mm -hmm. um, what is, I guess, your first proud win and then your now present most proud win? Oh, that's a good question. My first proud win. I mean, I guess beating the people who trained me, which were like Ultimate Roy and Roy Master, was like the first thing um, that I really was like happy about. But looking back at it, like considering our skill level, that really wasn't <laughs> all too impressive um, considering how things are now. But um, I mean, it's all like relative to the time. Yeah, yeah. Um, but I think like following that, the first win that I really got that I was like, happy about um was this player banks and he's the brother that um if i if i'm not mistaken i, I want to say he's the twin brother but maybe they just look very like of thorn um both from maine uh, banks and thorn they used to always come out to tournaments together and uh they're both very good um and and banks would play chic and um i think when i finally you know he would beat me all the time and so when I started to finally, like, take games off of him and take sets, I was pretty happy about that. I think I won my first set of him at the Speed of Thought Playhouse, which was, like, um, basically a comedy club slash bar that we ran tournaments in back in the day. Um, that was, I think, the first time I beat him, maybe in 2008 or... No, probably... Uh, yeah, maybe 2008 or 2000, 2009. It's, it's hard to keep track of all those dates, but... Uh, you know, that was my first, like, big win that I was like, oh, yes, I'm getting good. I beat Banks, you know, and crossed that one off my list. And uh, But, um, I mean, I guess you would say, like, I, I don't really know what my most proud win is right now, to be honest. Like, I've beaten Kells. I've beaten Leffen. I've beaten Kira. Um, like, right now, I guess those are probably, like, the biggest wins I have. Um, but I don't really, like, feel proud about any of them so it's really hard for me to say like what what match or what win i take the most pride in at this point i see i'm curious uh what went to your mind when you beat leffen i know i know it's like a different leffen than is known mm. now but i feel like it's always just like a fun fact everyone's just like oh matt dot said is oh i was like he's gonna tweet about it's this. like sounds totally versus did. armada yeah, you gotta take that one. I'm never gonna play him again if I can help it. I mean, I, I really would like to, but, like, you know. Um, gotta keep the wit W, dude. But, no, um, <laughs> I guess the first thing that went through my mind was, like, well, I didn't expect that. And, like, second second thing that followed was, like, that was slightly easier than I thought it would be. And then after that, he's, he's probably gonna tweet about this, which he totally did. He tweeted that he was gonna quit Melee um, <laughs> right after our set. And <laughs> then following that was, like, oh, dude, me and G-Money are gatekeepers. You know, we protected America on that day. Because he <laughs> sent them into losers. I took them out. Um, I don't... But yeah, I mean, like, I went into that set thinking, like, all right, don't have an expectation. Just enjoy it. And then I ended up winning it. Um, so I was surprised. I guess that was the biggest thing. <laughs> like, I, cool. imagine, I imagine he, like, absolutely hates it. Every time someone brings that up, it's like he oh. probably does. But it's I try like, to oh my him god, up. it's like it was yeah. like <laughs> I, I try not to poke him too much about that. Yeah, because you know, he left him firing shots at me because I'm still bad at melee, and he got really good. <laughs> <laughs> um, 
You know, what do you think is one of the reasons that's kind of held you back from getting really good? I remember before you kind of talked about how, like, maybe, like, the skill depth in New England was a cause, but... Mm. What do you think? What are some of the things that you think are holding you back? Um, it's hard to. I, I guess I don't practice nearly enough as I should. I don't have like a practice routine. I don't, especially in the last couple of weeks, I haven't sat down at all to play solo melee. Um, and when I do, I'll like I'll practice certain tech and like I'll improve at it. Like this year, I've gotten a lot better at certain things because I have tried to make like specific effort to get better at them. But um, I don't have a consistent push. Um, my motivation to play melee is very sporadic, um, you know, and, and I feel like I give it a little bit of resistance just because of how prevalent it's been in my life and, like, every moment that I've always jumped at playing melee. Um, but I also play very thoughtlessly. I don't go into it too much thinking, like, strategically. I, I play very reactionary, and, um, that's not how you should play melee. <laughs> So that's also been a big thing that's helped me back. Like, I, I recognize, like, okay, I shouldn't do this, but I don't replace that with, like, I should do this instead. And I don't put the time in to get myself to the level of understanding that I can pull that information out of my head in a split second and make it apply in-game. So I think that's a, one of the biggest things that's, like, just held me back because I just don't put the correct work in. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, uh, I mean, I, put a, I, I, like, have a lot of fun with it. And I yeah. am very creative with how I play melee, and like I think about it in, I think about it in my own way. I don't really know how to put how I think about melee in, into words, but I think about it in my own way, and you know that's gotten me to a point, but not far enough, certainly. Mm -hmm. And one of the things that you've also kind of been known for is kind of getting a little salty, mm -hmm. like. In Berkeley, there was a joke for Ralph at their... He got an award. It's called I, I the Making the Tournament Run Faster Award. <laughs> it went to Ralph because... Yeah, yeah. He, oh, I know why. He helped uh, <laughs> Super Nebs run slightly faster by uh, dude. making a certain Falco. By taking two stocks. <laughs> yeah, by taking two stocks and making a certain Falco. Yeah. Dumba LRA Star Fox out of the yeah. match. Yeah, he certainly did. I helped speedrun that tournament. Yeah, um, <laughs> your speedrunning nature came right back. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, it's if it if it's something you want to talk about, I guess. Because no, I mean, I'm not gonna like. Has it has it always it. been like? Has the salt always consumed you? Oh yeah, definitely. even even from uh, the noob days. Oh, even from the noob days. Like my first controller used to have. Um, markings like on the you know like how controllers like in the middle of the back they have like a bulge yeah. um mine like my original one which i still have the shell of uh, it doesn't really work fully now but um oh god had just like so much of the paint chipped off that part because <laughs> i used to like play and i'd be like ah and i'd slam it against the floor you know um i don't really do that anymore i have much more of a grasp on it than that now but uh yeah, I, I guess, I mean, like, that frustration of just being like, I know what I have to do and I can't do it, um, has just always been, like, there. And that's always just been, like, one of the driving things. And I, and I, I fought it sometimes, I fight it stronger than other times, you know, and I'll have, like, a concentrated effort for an elongated period of, of months to really reduce that. And, you know, like, sometimes I'll have, like, a little mantra where I close my eyes and just, like, say two or three lines to myself to get myself into a certain headspace before the match and be like, all right, you know, even if this guy beats me, it's disrespectful of me to, like, get angry or upset about it, you know? Like, he's competing and he's trying to win, so, like, I shouldn't take that away from him. And it's hard to always um, hold that back, especially if, like, other factors in life, like, maybe you just didn't get a lot of sleep or if you're just already drained from something else or you know, you're just tired and don't have a lot of mental energy and you're just fatigued. And it, in situations like that, it becomes a lot easier to get frustrated and flustered and fail. And, um, you know, so I've, I've tried to, like, learn as much as I can to, you know, help understand, like, mentally kind of, like, what can lead um, to that sort of happening more easily um, and taking the steps to avoid it that I can. But it's... It's always a battle, um, you know. It's it's not something that like can just be, you know, something you work on for 
a period of time and it's just fixed. It's not something like that. Um, what kind of you know, something you have to always constantly work on. What kind of goes through your mind when that happens? Um, like if I get frustrated and like like you know either quit out of a game or something. Yeah, like what's like the uh, like the thought process leading up to it? Like, it's like well, lead, leading up to it. Um, I guess I'll use the the Ralph set as an example. Mm -hmm. um, was that I was playing him and I immediately felt that I was just off my game completely. Just couldn't like make anything happen, and he was just playing a game where it was just flowing out for him, and he was just in a good spot. Um, with melee and everything, and I just felt like, all right, you know what? I'm not going to be able to turn this around, so I'm just going to quit and walk away. Um, and sometimes, you know, uh, that's what happens where, like, I might maybe not necessarily feel that same way where I'm just not feeling like melee, but, like, I'll be playing and, like, maybe I'll just, I'll, like, run in with an aerial, like a short hop aerial, like, three times in a row and get, you know, baited by a wave dash back three times in a row and it's like what are you doing you know you shouldn't be doing that um and to me it comes back and you know and i take that into myself and sometimes and what you want to do is just when you do that be like okay wait cool i'm not gonna do that again <laughs> you know and that's just it and you know you, you play around it and you realize that like if they're wave dashing back you know instead of doing a full aerial if you want to do a short hop you can react and wait and hold back the aerial instead of doing short hop down there down on the C stick immediately. Mm -hmm. um, you know, you can give yourself more room and stop playing so automatically. And, um, you know, if I'm not in full control of my gameplay and I do things that I know just don't work and I get punished for them like that sometimes, um, especially re and repetitively and uh, can really get me down, um, you know, where then I turn to myself and be like, you're an idiot. Like, you shouldn't do that. And it becomes very self-deprecating, um, you know, to the point, like, of me telling me that, like, I'm worthless, that I hate myself, that, you know, you shouldn't be playing this game, that you should throw your trash, throw your controller into a trash barrel, you know, stuff like that. Um, and it's actually very... It's not good. <laughs> um, you know, it doesn't feel good for me uh, in any way. Um, you know, so now I try to try to walk it off and let it, like let it go more or sometimes I'll just be done with the tournament if I get like knocked out and I don't feel good about it I'll just leave you know mm -hmm. I'll just go home um and just you know kind of get away from the situation get away from melee entirely um but yeah it's it's just very very self-deprecating when a situation like that happens and uh sometimes that can be shrugged off pretty easily but other times um you know, it sticks with me to the point where you like, I get like a lump in my throat or something. Um, you know, so it, it, it's it's definitely a challenge. Um, so you have to deal with that. But do you ever yeah. try and fight it, like min match? Oh yeah, definitely. And I've I've been successful before. Uh -huh. um, you know, it it really can play into like, you know, one how much has like this been on my mind recently? Like if I'm getting flustered like how much have I been thinking recently like all right if I get flustered here's my plan you know if I haven't been thinking about that for a while and if I just happen to be like you know maybe maybe I got like really drunk the night before or maybe I'm just tired or you know just like there, there are a lot of things that can lead to mental fatigue mm -hmm. and you know in, in those situations is when it's a lot easier um for that to come out but yeah, I definitely have tried to fight it, and I have been successful in fighting it. And sometimes I haven't been successful in fighting it. Okay. Yeah, it's like it's something that stumps a lot of players. Mm -hmm. like, it definitely does, and I, I mean, it's like it's sort of like a almost like a responsive habit mm -hmm. in a way. Um, so I tried to learn a lot about habitual behaviors because of that. Does it? Um, yeah. Does it kind of the anger kind of come out in other places, or is it kind of just smash? No, I mean, there are moments where like I'll get frustrated at certain things, but not on not in any consistent, replicatable way. Mm -hmm. You know, it, it's yeah, it's really just smash. Okay, that's a uh, yeah, but it's. I think it's like maybe maybe competition. I guess you could say, but like just in the way that like. Of how much control you have with Smash and how personal it is. Yeah. Um, there's not a lot of things that, that can replicate the exact feeling of it. 
Yeah, and it's and it's like it's really common in like competitive games. There's like you see why you're losing, and it's like you're you think you're losing because like oh I'm because like you're doing the things you're just doing the wrong things, and you know you're doing the wrong things when you do them. Yeah, right. And it's just like if you don't know what you have to do to get around that, and if you don't practice and rehearse, you know, dealing with it, then like it's gonna just continue to happen, basically. Do you get really nervous when you play, or? Uh, sometimes depends on the tournament. Um, most recent pound, I got very nervous when I played, and I ended up getting like bodied on day two. But um, most most nationals, I feel a lot more nervous than I do at locals. Um, at locals, I basically never feel nervous. Um, same for regionals or super regionals. Like I never feel nervous for those. It's it's really just like nationals. And once I get to a certain like, if I hear that I have to like play mango i'm like all right i know if i play well like i can like probably take a game off mango but like you know when, when you go up against them it's just totally different you're just not prepared for it and, and, and the nerves can come through a lot more that way yeah. um probably on like the big yeah. stage too and oh yeah everyone's just yeah, waiting I mean, for like the, the, the giphy cat definitely everyone's know, waiting when, for that giphy cat i always want to give people the giphy cat too <laughs> that makes it hard sometimes i want to do something and it's like no i can't give them a giphy cat off that <laughs> like i try to do something different and it's like i died <laughs> <laughs> yeah um yeah, sages sage can definitely have that effect as well yeah it's it's probably one of the most interesting aspects of just how like like the, the difference between people's like friendly and tournament play mm, yeah for sure there's a big difference between them i would say <laughs> And um, you know, moving forward. Okay, one thing I need to talk to you about is uh, why do you, when do you switch to Falco? Because summer of two thousand six. Two thousand six. What was the the cause? I really like lasering. You just like the gun. Mm -hmm. pew, pew, pew. That was it. That was the shortest. Like that's like straight up. No. I was like, oh, this is awesome. I can short hop laser. Um, my opponent played Fox, and like Andrew uh, was the first I've been telling you about that I got into like you know, competing with and everything, and, yeah. um, he was a fox man, and, uh, so, you know, on top of, like, lasering, like, I, I ended up being able to do, like, pillar combos and stuff, and you're like, oh, this is so cool, <laughs> um, so, I mean, it was, it was pretty much, like, you know, I just started playing Fap, and I was like, this is awesome, <laughs> it's like, I love it, I can shoot lasers, and I can do a downer, and I can shine and do a downer, and I'm like, oh, this is great, <laughs> um, you know, so, yeah, it was definitely... Like, I think why I started playing Falcon once I learned about all that stuff. Like, this is super cool. I'm just going to keep doing it. Uh-huh. All right. Mathos was my inspiration for a little bit. And Mathos. he used to be... He's not really around anymore. I... But he used, he used to be known as a Falco who would laser camp harder than anyone else. Now you think about that and it's more Zanguzen. Even harder like, than Zang? <laughs> oh, God. Yeah, yeah. You know, he used to be notorious for it, like, back in the day. Where he would just shoot more lasers than anybody. Okay, yeah, and um, I kind of want to talk more about the present now, like, huh? like the the more recent years, like twenty thirteen yeah. through twenty fifteen, um, okay. with the coming of like the documentary Evo twenty thirteen, you know, almost every region kind of saw an explosion, but I think one of the most interesting regions that had the growth was within New England, mm -hmm. because, you know, within like Boston alone, it's like there's like so many players. Oh, yeah. And oh, yeah, I kind of want to talk about how, like, you guys kind of capitalized on that growth to create a really strong region where you guys are, like, constantly outgrowing your venues and need to keep expanding. Um, yeah, I mean, how did we do that? Um, so this is this is still at the point where, like, you know, now nowadays I'm not really, like, in the same role within New England as I used to be. Um, you know, this was still like when I was like the primary organizer of basically everything in the region. And, um, you know, we had this Facebook group doing the melee and, um, so Evo rolls around and the documentary rolls around and, you know, everywhere just kind of gets like a boom because of that. And, um, we ended up finding a weekly just gaming event in Boston, this Tuesday night thing called Game Over. Um, which is still around, just, um, you know, we've parted ways with it, but, uh, they had, like, all these different retro games, card games, whatever you wanted, basically, and we're like, hey, can we run a Smash tournament here? That would be cool, and it was in Cambridge, so right by Harvard and a couple other colleges, um, they were like, yeah, 
yeah, you could do that. We had like a 14 person turnout. We're like, Hey, not bad. <laughs> and it's like melee at a bar. This is dope. And you know, like the next week we had like 17 people and, um, every new person I saw, um, during registration, I turned to them and I said, are you in New England melee? Which is our Facebook group. Um, you know, again, at this time starting as we probably had about 350 members. Um, you know, I'd be like, are you a New England Melee? You should be a New England Melee. You know, this is where we organize everything. This is where you can find players. And, like, I told everybody who came to the tournaments, like, as I'm taking their money. And for maybe, like, the first, uh, maybe five months of game over, um, when people registered, I asked them for their name. And so when I made the results thread on Facebook, <laughs> I would tag somebody's name or, you know, I'd like post up like one through 33 or whatever. And I'd put their tag and then tag them, put their name next to it. Um, so they saw the post, they knew the result, they knew where the next one was and they reminded the Facebook group and everything. And if they weren't in it and if I knew their name, I'd add them to it. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, so I, like, I, I grew the Facebook group like that, you know, posting on Smashboards too. Smash, this was still a thing you did in the day when you post on Smashboards. Um, you know, including the information there. Um, and we saw those numbers grow and like eventually for my birthday in November, we had like 41 people and we were like, this is crazy. <laughs> um, cause that was like pretty much like almost the size of a mass madness at the time. Um, <laughs> and this was in 2013, right? Yeah. Um, we had like a big mass madness in August of that year, which had, I don't think it broke a hundred. I think it had like 80 or 90 people. Um, and that was like big, um, it was like the end of the circuit, pop bonuses, VGBC streamer, all that stuff. Um, but like that continued and, and the game over moved over to a different venue. And when they moved to a whole new venue, nobody except for Melee and Street Fighter came back. <laughs> like all the card games, casuals, nobody came back. Um, and so our events continued to grow and, you know, we hit like 60 people and stuff like that. We're like, whoa, this is crazy. This is super cool. And we're seeing all these people from other schools coming in, um, people that we've never seen in the community before. And so you have to think about a way, how do I keep these guys coming back? Like aside from running a good event. Um, and I'd always been running amateur brackets at my monthlies and stuff like that since like 2011. And um, so I was like, all right, what can I do that's like sort of similar, you know, where it caters to a lower class of skill collegiate players that we're seeing come out. And that's, you know, where, you know, team spirit playing in the crew, you know, the melee games basically um, came about. And uh, that, you know, we started it in February of 2014. Um had like 137 players sign up for the first one out of 10 schools. And, uh, you know, that really saw a lot more people get involved in the community. You know? and, it, and it really saw our Facebook group grow and grow and grow. And it saw the game over events grow and grow and grow to the point where now, you know, we had a, we now call the event new game plus, and we had 99 people, I think like two weeks ago. And, you know, we plan to break a hundred, a couple more times this summer too. Um, but like that's really, I guess, the primary way that we we started to grow it, and you know, doing the mailing games just got so many new people and, and their friends, mm -hmm. um, and people who were just like, oh, there's a collegiate thing. This is super cool. I want to get involved. Um, you know, it just kept getting more and more people into it that way, and our community continued to grow. We got more organizers. We got more people and their friends, and um, you know, just all across New England, we saw events sprout up and everything, and. Um, you know, now, so basically New England is like, I think the most active region in terms of number of tournaments per week, um, in the world, uh, if I'm not mistaken. How many tournaments you know, per week is there? Are there? Uh, we have one Monday weekly. We have, I think only, no, I think we have two Tuesday weeklies. Um, On the same day? Well, one's in Mass and like, I think one's in Connecticut, if I'm not mistaken. Uh -huh. Um... So it's like a couple hour difference. Okay, okay. Um, we have two Wednesday weeklies, again, a mass in Connecticut. Um, no, we only have one Wednesday. We have two Wednesday, one Monday, one Tuesday, two Wednesdays, um, two on Thursday, uh, and I think three on Friday. Um, we have two bi-month, no, we have two bi-weekly Saturday events. 
uh, one monthly Saturday event, and then like whatever else gets sprinkled in as well on top for that for Saturdays. And we have don't forget Super Dragon. Least, Super Dragon is a Monday event. Yeah, you um, can never forget. Super yeah, that's Dragon. the Monday. That's the Monday one I'm talking yeah, about. Yeah. Um, and then like Sundays, we have I think a, I think at least two events that happen on Sundays. That's actually so. insane, though. Yeah, no, you can literally, literally go to a tournament every single day of the week in New England. Like, (laughs) literally. Like, people, like, Mafia does not work. He just goes and gets first and second (laughs) at tournaments. (laughs) Um, He used to get a job, though. But, like, (laughs) um, you know, it's, 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 it's just grown and grown and grown to this crazy point that we're at now, which is, it's just awesome. You know, we've started to, you know, in turn, we started to run larger events, you know, like Bust and Shine and, uh, NSA and you know and every other event started to grow because of the the growth of players but it was just a lot of just you know when I saw somebody I was like join the Facebook group <laughs> and just doing that for months on end as as we grew from there and it just continued to go up and up and up and up and up yeah and um yeah it's like it's nuts though like to see things even grow even more like like the melee games right like it started mm-hmm. just Boston alone and Right. It's growing. Well, that, was the, that was the idea, but it, the first season was New England. Yeah. Because the, the idea was to do Boston alone. And I had like six schools that I written down on a piece of paper. And I was like, it'll probably be these six schools. And like the first school to qualify to have five players sign up when we opened registration for the first ever Melee Games was the University of Connecticut, which was a two hour drive from Boston. <laughs> so <laughs> completely uh, it blew away my expectations from the start. But yeah, no, sorry. You can continue. No, but it's like it grew like kind of exponentially like it's like oh oh like check out like oh new england's doing this thing and then it's like oh the east coast and then it's like whoa one season uh all of a sudden uh you got norcal invading Mm -hmm. the east coast yeah sick um i'm pretty thrilled about how far we made it with the million games and definitely surprised (laughs) about how far we've made it with the melee games um, I'm just mostly happy nobody's called me out for being like not as good as I could be on, on it. Um, you know, but I've I've we've already we've got like a better format for this coming season that I'm very looking forward to looking forward to revealing. Um, which we'll probably do at like either the last week of July or first week of August. And basically, we have like if it when it when it when it's all done, we'll have like around a hundred events planned from September to November um nationwide and uh you know that's gonna just make things so much easier yeah. and improved upon how we're doing it we're charging more this season because we're doing a dual season so um we'll have like a, a real budget and uh you know just just continuing to to push that forward and make it easier for us to do more work and good work with it mm-hmm. um that's just been a crazy learning thing because i totally totally have no real like training <laughs> in any way on how to do any of this um so it's very much just been a make it up as you go and we're just very lucky that everybody else in the community in a large way is in that same kind of boat um you know so nobody's like looking over and being like you don't know what you're doing <laughs> you suck you know um you know people kind of look over and be like you don't know what you're doing but whatever you're doing is really cool so i want to see more of it <laughs> Uh, and that's, yeah, that's something that uh, I've come to realize with, with TMG. But um, mm-hmm. just the way that it's continued to grow is just beyond me. And it's basically at this point where, like, I schedule, like, especially now that, you know, I'm, I'm moving into SF and, like, the way I'm kind of looking at it is being like, all right, I'm finally, like, getting a move on with my life. <laughs> 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 you know, like, finally just getting settled into being like, all right, now I can really kick some ass. And, um Plus, I also don't want to, like, start working there and be like, oh, man, everybody else is already so awesome with what they do, you know. Uh, I can't be the one guy who doesn't do dope work also. So it's, like, really motivated me to do a lot more, especially in the last month. And, um, you know, at, at this point and for the foreseeable future, like, I base part of my weekly schedule around TMG and, like, how on each day, like, how much work I'm going to put into it and, uh, you know, have that, like, written out and, like, try to tell myself like okay you know you have to do this whole thing but if you just follow like day by day by day by day and just do the small incremental part every day 
you'll get there. And it's like, all right, don't worry about the whole overarching picture because you'll get there. <laughs> that's really, really hard. But that's been like the newest thing that I've tried to employ for myself. And it's been working out pretty decently. But, uh, you know, that it's it's taught me a lot. TMG has taught me a lot. And uh, I'm very thankful for um, that and the response that it's had for sure. I know you talk a lot about your new job. And uh, mm -hmm. let's let's talk about it a little bit. All right, we we kind of touched on it earlier, but... Yeah. What what are you doing now? Your new your new job for Smash EG. So my my title is partner support, which is pretty simple. Um I'm not a coder or anything, so I'm not doing any of that language based stuff on a computer, uh building the website, nothing like that. Um the website has many users, many different tournament organizers, and it's gotten to the point where the little six or seven person team of coders um, can, you know, work with every single tournament organizer that uses it fluently. And, um, so what they've done is gotten more people to come into the company. Uh, you know, yes, they have some people that have hired for, um, you know, development and things like that, um, to help with, with the workload, but they also have brought in people like myself and Bear and, um, I think Leah Boo and like Aiden Calvin and a couple other people um, zoo. to work with the, the zoo, right? Um, to work with the people who use their website. So I'll be working with tournament organizers um, to basically, you know, use the service the best that they can to advise them on how to best run their event, to help them out with like anything they need, like Big Blue Esports. We have a group chat with them. Um, another event that I'm like kind of a part of, we have a group chat with them, um, you know, and, and so I'll be like in those like responsive basically to the clients who are the tournament organizers. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I mean, there's there's more to it from there as well, but that's like the gist of it. And I'm sure when I actually officially start with them, which is on the 12th of this month, uh, it's very soon, um, I'll get a, a bigger, you know, kind of briefing on it. You know what I mean? You're pretty much just doing a like high level toing. You can yeah, never, you can never get away from that to life. No, and that's fine. Like I'm good at it. <laughs> um, you're kind you know, of I'm you're not... kind of just always like, yeah, I think this event's gonna fail. This is how you fix it. Like I've done that a couple times in the past. <laughs> <laughs> it's like yeah. there's logistically no way this event will succeed. I feel like you're gonna have fun doing that a lot, except this yeah, time no. instead of for. The community, it's like, oh, no, it's just my job to make sure you guys don't fail. <laughs> and that's fine because I get, you know, I'll, it'll be my livelihood. And, yeah. you know, um, for a long time, you know, you mentioned it a little bit earlier where, you know, I've always, I, I've kind of lamented um, not having a job that, you know, works with what I want to be doing. And, uh I definitely have expressed doubt in the past that, you know, I would just be like, you know, what am I doing? I don't have a degree. I'm not going to school. I'm only doing, you know, I have this job that is basically a dead end job as far as it goes. Mm -hmm. And I'm just pouring my extra time, you know, outside of work into the Melee games, into the New England community and, I'll work myself like into depressions and stuff like that. Um, and I just had to continue to tell myself like, well, you've come this far, you failed and you failed and you failed, but you still have come this far. And if you stop, then you'll feel even worse than you do like right now, basically. Um, you know, so I, I, I think that's kind of like what continued to push me forward. And so I'm, beyond relieved and thrilled uh to have this as like my my job you know um so i i have no problem at all with anything that they're going to want me to do as part of the position mm -hmm. that's uh it's just great to hear like just to see so many smashers kind of jump into a position they love yeah, a lot of people are, are are getting into that which is awesome i mean you know raging cherry got picked up yeah um you know, like I know Zoo finally back in NorCal. Zoo, yeah, yeah. I mean, people are people are basically becoming uh, esports professionals. Like, I guess I guess that's technically what I am now. Um, 
which is freaking cool <laughs> <laughs> you know and it, it's just like you know just the way that things are working out for some folks that have you know just just been putting in this work and it's like now becoming their livelihood it's just fantastic to see and it's fantastic to experience let me tell you as one of those people it's mm -hmm. You know, it's like a weight off my shoulders in a certain way. It it really validates like a uh, all those like hours of basically yeah, like free work. Yeah, it's like you, you haven't gone through all this suffering and you haven't gone through all this, you know, work basically that you've done because you just want to do it. Mm -hmm. You know, there's you haven't done that for nothing. You've yeah. there, there's there's light at the end of the tunnel and so, and if you're lucky, you'll get it. <laughs> yeah, the the passion pays off. Yeah. Yeah, I'm very happy. I mean, everybody I've known, um, you know, there, there's nobody who really knows me that doesn't know <laughs> that this is like something I, I, I want in a deep way. Mm -hmm. um, you know, so it's it's just, it's a very nice feeling. And I'm very, very happy about it. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, you know, that's that's all I really have to kind of talk about for tonight. Is there anything that you wanted to talk about in particular, or mm. anything you want to say? Anyone you want to thank? Anything I want to talk about in particular, um, or thank? Let's see. I didn't prepare for this. I wasn't ready for this. This is a curveball of a question. It's a curveball. Yeah, it's coming coming at me fast here, dude. I don't know. Um, how, about, how about this? Uh, what's what's <laughs> one of your favorite moments in like your melee history? Like. Not in game, it can be out of game, but like, what's that like one Hopefully. thing that happened with homies that's just like you always remember? It's a story you love to there's, tell. There's a, story a you love lot of things that I will never forget in melee, whether it be going out at 4 a.m. You know, to find people in the woods at Foxwoods who were totally not in the woods that were just pulling your leg and let you do it with another person with no flashlight. Uh, that's one. <laughs> um, the other, driving cross country to Evo. Driving cross country to Evo and back. Um, uh, MLG New York in 2006 is definitely one. Uh, the old Cataclysm tournaments. The uh, first time I ever went to a Genesis. Genesis 2. Um, playing Red Rover on the final day when they closed the venue down to reorganize it and threw everybody out of the venue. And we're just on this fairgrounds that's completely, basically like empty. And there's so much room to run around. And the weather was just perfect perfect norcal weather and you know playing red rover playing tag playing like fish and minnow or shark and minnow and uh with all these people in the smash community with that it's just unforgettable experience absolutely um well so there's there's one as a, oh yeah when i went to uh i went to um seattle in like 2011 stayed at silent wolf's house the tuck house the tuck um, tell you okay you know <laughs> <laughs> Uh, the house is filthy and uh you know we were up there for like northwest manifest and uh pee, pee was there axe was there siren was there um west balls was there um uh, who else was there j666 was there um i think there were like one more person I, I, i'm sorry i can't remember who they were but like there's there's just some of my favorite experiences man like like they're just 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 such a nice time. Um, but I mean, I guess if there's anyone I want to like thank, at least in the current times, it would be like, you know, Prague has always been like super supportive of me. Um, the guys with Big Blue Esports definitely, you know, without them we wouldn't have Big Blue Esports. <laughs> um, Shout out to Ray. she and the other people. She, Avery, David, Colin. Um, um, Eduardo, oh god, there's so many. I'm sorry. We have a lot of people that are part of Big Blue now. Um, we have like at least like 10 or 12 or 15 people or something. Um, everybody in the Melee Games, of course, which at this point the Melee Games family has about like 30 people in it. I've got a couple summer volunteers from New England to help me do some grunt work um, that the directors don't have to get involved with. And we've got like 22 or 23 directors. Um, I've got like those six volunteers as well. So we're like just around 30 people in the melee games now. Um, you know, obviously the Smash GG guys for being completely freaking awesome and being very helpful with a lot of work that I've done. Um, mm -hmm. everybody in melee on me, uh, everybody in New England, y'all suck. Um, 
know, NorCal's great. <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, GZ is the, so... Join the uh, best region in the, the world. Yeah, I'm already, I'm already looking at buying a one-unit shirt. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm already on it, don't worry. <laughs> um, but yeah, no, the, uh, this time in the Smash Bros. has been, like, fantastic. It's been one of the best things that's ever happened to me, for sure. And, uh, I have a lot of flaws, but I'm happy that people, you know, are still supportive of me in, in a lot of ways and the events that I do and everything like that. Um, yeah, like it's, it's just awesome, dude. The community is definitely the best thing that's ever happened in my life. So shout out to everybody in the community. <laughs> that's good to hear. All right. Um, well, thank you so much for joining me today, Matt. You know, I, thank you. I wish you the best of luck. Uh, can't wait to see you in NorCal going to be yeah you, are you back in NorCal yeah I am I am in NorCal for the the next few for the summer so no, I have a really actually a, a very serious question for you what have you fixed your mother's printer yet <laughs> no comment <laughs> you haven't done it you <laughs> son of a gun <laughs> you haven't done it <laughs> I knew that, that was coming. Your printer, dude. <laughs> it, it, it's hooked up to my computer. It's hooked up to my computer. Oh, that's okay, not okay, a long-term yeah. solution. It's not. Yeah. Well, All as right. Long as, as your mother can print the necessary articles, I'm just checking for her. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, yeah, uh, no, I'm never I'll housing definitely... again. Never housing. <sighs> never house that thought <laughs> I blew it. You blew it. I had my Anna Ashcon's house. I blew it. Um. <laughs> No, but dude, I'm definitely looking forward to seeing you when I get out there. I, I actually have, uh, I get there on the 18th, my roommate gets there on the 27th, so I, I have like nine days, and I think I Are might you? have like a Smash Fest in between. <laughs> Are you living with a Smasher? Yeah, uh, Soft, from Georgia. Oh shit, you're living with Soft? Yeah. That's amazing. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, he just, he posted in NorCal Melee that he was moving to the city. You're like, um, I'm moving to the city. Yeah, I was like, this is perfect. Let's get a place. And, you know, our payment went through. We're, we're official. We're completely confirmed with the unit. Um, the soft and Matt Dobbs up show. Yeah, yeah dude, we're going to start streaming from the apartment. We'll, uh, we'll take over for Scar and Thof, But um, <laughs> <laughs> we'll be, except except being far more dry and much less personal. Much more East Coast. Much more East Coast. <laughs> we won't say hella ever. No, it's um, going to happen. I've started so, to work at, I've already started to work that in my vernacular. Who am I kidding? You're gonna uh, you're just gonna pick up hella because it's a it's an easy word to use. It's the thing to do. It just um, it just happens. Like you just I'm gonna try to convert as many people to wicked as I can. <laughs> wicked dude, wicked no, I... cool, it's such a good word. <laughs> All right, Matt. All right, anyways, thank you for joining <laughs> me today, Matt. You can follow Matt at Matt.zev on Twitch, dot zev on Twitter, and Matt.zev on YouTube. And you can follow me at Ashcon, Ashcon underscore, and Ashcon91. Um, you know, thanks so much for joining me. I, you know, it's, it's exciting, though. Like, it's going to be cool to see this new journey kind of unfold for everyone. Yeah, definitely. Definitely. And yeah, thanks for having me on, man. Uh, I definitely look forward to seeing you when I am uh, up in San Francisco. Ooh, the hype. All right. Yeah. And, uh, All right. Later, Ashcon. See you, Matt. Mm-hmm.